Hello there, this is Kay White and welcome to you. Welcome to this webinar, Structure Gives You Freedom. And the intention of this webinar, which is part of a power pack of webinars, a suite of tailored webinars for these tricky lockdown working from home times, the point of this webinar is to share with you why it is so important to add some structure to your day, maybe more so than you already think is necessary because of how it helps you in effectiveness and how it helps your energy. So I'm going to share my screen with you in a second, but I just wanted to share with you before I do that, that I have been using all of the tips and the tools, the insights that I'm going to give you, as have my clients, to make themselves more effective day to day, to really put, to, for want of a better expression, their own energy ahead of everyone else's because that's how you are most effective. How can you help everyone else and do what you're supposed to do if you are running out of energy and running out of time and feeling kind of as if you're chasing your tail all the time. So that's the purpose of this short snappy webinar. I'm gonna go over here now and share my screen with you so that you can see some of my slides here. There we go. And I'm going to turn that into a slide presentation. I do feel a little bit like I'm landing the space shuttle when I do this. So structure gives you freedom, how time boxing your virtual working works. And as I said, the intention of this is to give you something right on time to support you at this very strange time. And we don't know how long this is going to continue. But what I do know is that companies have been telling me that actually they're going to change the way that they're working, that they're going to have many more people working from home. People want to, and also people actually have decided, lots of um, organizations have decided that they don't need to have the same amount of office space, that they don't need to have everyone commuting, not every day. So a lot of companies are going to go for kind of three days in the office, two days at home, the other way around. And so using this kind of structure or anything that you can gather from this webinar will support you in that. And it will also support you at home with your family who also need to have structure in their day to give them the best chance at being effective. So let me make sure my slides are moving as they should. Yep. So today is really about the idea that whatever we're doing today is the effect of whatever happened yesterday. And by that I mean, if we are running behind from something today that we're trying to do, then it's often about how we prepared or what we said yes and no to, how we thought about things. I know, for example, on a Sunday, despite sometimes feeling that you don't want to necessarily engage with your work, I do always recommend to have <clears throat> at least half an hour, 20 minutes, just looking at the day tomorrow, the week ahead, so that you don't feel like you're kind of literally pushed into your week without having some planning. It sounds really obvious, but I absolutely do this. I have a look at my week, I print out on my calendar, I just print out something like that so that I have it on my desk. And so I can kind of start to see where my gaps are, but also where they are getting very compressed. Uh, and if that's the case, how to manage that. So today is yesterday's effect and is tomorrow's cause. So what you plan for tomorrow is about what you're thinking about today. And I know, as we all do, I know that you can't always plan every moment because it's not yours to plan. People jump on top of things. But Oprah said, Everybody has the same 24 hours in any one day. And what separates us is how we use it and what decisions we make along the way. So I believe that commitment to having structure in your day absolutely is the key. You can have your diary and all the gizmos and the alarms and all of these things. You can have them all going at the same time. But if you don't commit to it, if you're not prepared to say, ah, oh, actually, okay, I can't hop on a Zoom call right now. I can't hop on a conference call right now. Can you give me 10 minutes? Because you can see what's ahead, what you've got to plan for, or the fact that you actually haven't had a rest or a break for you know, an hour or so. So being able to be really structured in your day really does give you, as I've said, freedom. And there's a kind of irony about this because a lot of people resist structure. A lot of people will say, oh, I just kind of want to go with the flow and find out, you know, as the day evolves, what's happening. It'll, it'll work. I have a kind of rough idea of what I need to do. But I will share with you that working with 
corporate career women who want to get ahead in their career and to make more of an impression at work, so much of it is in the planning. So much of it is how you plan to show up, what you plan to say, what you need to get across. And that comes with a commitment to making, if you will, the structure of what you're going to say effective. So <clears throat> it's so important at the moment. This is, it's obvious, but it's also worth reminding us for the purposes of this webinar. There are so many lives colliding at the moment. If you've got a family and you've got children and you're homeschooling, your wife or your husband is working at home as well. There are so many competing um, forces for your attention and it can be really, really draining. And without having um, a, some form of structure or some form of commitment between all of you about how that's going to work, even if this is you working from home on your own, to actually have the structure around you to be able to say, oh, you know, what I'm getting, where's my exercise, where's my downtime, where's lunch, where's a couple of phone calls with a friend, where's this Zoom meeting, <clears throat> where's my preparation time. This is an underestimated part, preparation time, and we're going to talk about that in a second. It does seem a huge um, amount of attention and, and things grabbing for you at the moment, as well as trying to rest and sleep. But at the same time, everyone is in the same boat at the moment as far as being able to juggle and having to juggle. And with competing ideas and thoughts and support. So I really do encourage you, and I do this from, I say this as loudly for myself, to really think about your own time and energy because that's the only thing you can really control. And as I will say, <clears throat> the days slip by, it's amazing. And clients have said to me, I don't know what happened today. Um, I didn't seem to do anything. Well, I seemed to be on a call one, call after another and literally jump from one thing to another without actually implementing and so ending up working late into the evening. So this is then, of course, where burnout can live. And this is why I want to be so fierce with you to encourage you where this makes sense to you to really look at how you manage your time and your day. Well, the question I'm putting to myself and to give to you, who am I to share this with you? And why am I on this call with you today? <clears throat> I would say to you that in your career, as in your life, the road to success is always under construction. Lily Tomlin said that, the famous actor. And that diagram there depicts how I think a lot of people look at other people's success or other people's lives and think that that's a straight line. You know, it seems all right for you, you've got this sorted out. And, but actually, when you look closely and when you talk to people, their path, their road, their whichever you, metaphor you want to use, has had lots of twists and turns and roundabouts and dead ends and cul-de-sacs and fast lanes and hard shoulders. And that would be how I would describe my own career, what it looks like. I have had a career that spanned since, well, nearly 40 years. And I would say to you, I've had an absolute roller coaster ride a lot of the time. <clears throat> and my point of showing this again is that it's always evolving. I believe that we're always under construction. And I think that's inspiring rather than exhausting. I think it's inspiring because it means whatever you're trying to get done or have happen, or if you invest time in yourself, if you stay open, there are all sorts of things to learn and people will will help you and your evolution so it really is part of your own evolution to always look at yourself as something that's under construction and not the finished article and i think that's a an inspiration in itself and they say that a learning machine is an earning machine and what i again what i understand that to mean for me is there's always something else i can add i can tweak i can uh, iterate reiterate that means that this could be better, this could be easier, this could be more effective for me, which again is part of what this webinar is about for you. So that would be my view on a career path. I started my career at 18 years old as a secretary, a very wide-eyed, bright-eyed secretary, and literally it was virtually a typewriter like that, um, in a large international insurance brokerage house, Willis. I started at, um, well, se I was 17, and I worked my way up through twists and turns to, I decided to go onto the broking side. And when I went onto the broking side after about 10 years, I had this huge learning curve 
from working in percentages and working abroad and working with mainly, mainly men in this very roughy tufty trading floor, basically, in and out of broking to underwriters, broking in writing, being involved in the Bishopsgate bomb and all that went off in that, our office was blown up. Um, and so many lessons along the way. But I did end up being a divisional director. I worked in a team of, in global property and we broke business all around the world, corporate property like airlines and coal mines and uh, transit railways and all of these kind of big corporate risks. And one of the things I really learnt along the way as I went through the sort of ranks, if you will, I went to work for the company in Paris. I broke business in French. I taught myself to speak French and I had private lessons. I negotiated with my boss to ask him if I could go and work and live in Paris. And I had to obviously get my French up to a certain level. I made lots of faux pas, as they called it, as they call it. <laughs> but what I learned is that I leveraged connections. I wasn't afraid to ask. I put myself forward for things long before I was ready, taking leaps of faith. And I invested in myself along the way. I paid for a French course. I paid, I took holiday to live in the south of France for three weeks so that I could go on an intensive course and I negotiated. So if we look at where we are now and you look at where you are in your career, you're always, there's a pattern that you're following and there's things that you do naturally. And I took my own leap of faith and I left the insurance broking house and through a series of twists and turns started up my own business in 2006. And I coach corporate career women, showing them how to really leverage themselves at work. And I work with companies as well to help their female pipeline be more sustainable and to support business continuity with women stepping up and stepping forward and negotiating and being far more visible than perhaps they were before. I have written two best-selling books, The A to Z of Being Understood in 2011, and It's Always Your Move, Purposeful Progress for Corporate Career Women. Both of those books are available on Amazon, and in 2018, when I wrote It's Always Your Move, I asked Dame Inga Beale, and again, I had to ask, she wasn't going to come, not for me. I was honoured that Dame Inga Beale agreed to um, give me a testimonial for my book. And it is truly a, a twist and turn journey, ups and downs of your unique career journey. And she said that herself. So again, encouraging you to take what it is that you're doing that works, tweak the things that you may be not thinking are working so well. And that again is the point of always being under construction. Now, as I said, I partner with companies to develop and invest in their pipeline of women leaders. And I, <coughs> excuse me, I also do that, excuse my coughing, this is perfectly imperfect, this video, but that's the point. Nothing is perfect. It's a construct. And rather than getting too tangled up on everything, again, this is being natural and authentic. But this is what I do. And this is what I show women to be able to accept imperfections in themselves, but actually going with good enough and going with what they're trying to achieve rather than second guessing themselves. These are some of the organizations I've worked with in where some of my clients work and also where I've been brought in to support women and to support their, the um, learning and development and the HR function, and also sometimes being brought straight in by the CEO to say, what are we gonna do? This is, not, you know, this is happening or this isn't happening. So these are some of the organizations that I will have worked within and still am working within. And well, enough said about the female pipeline. I just wanted to share with you that I do work also with corporate men because often it will be how the men are interacting with the women that will make a, a big difference. And so sometimes working with, in partnership with both the men and the women is as effective, if not more, but it, it's always a case of meeting my clients where they're at and working out what it is that's going on. But I draw on my own 20 year corporate career all the time for inspiration, for ideas, and also for some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. So I work with women privately as well. Um, but what I will say is that most of my clients get promoted because they suddenly become really certain about what they're doing, what the value that they're adding. So they become from far more valuable to the company. So these are just come some of the things that I'm doing. I host live events, I mentor and I, I coach women. I show women how to be a, more, a better and more effective coach and mentor themselves. And 
I can't, I can only say to you, I absolutely love what I do. And when you're able to say that, you kind of don't work in the same way, but I do invest myself in my business. And this is why offering this, as I say, suite of webinars for things that I really know work is what I wanted to do for you today. So systemize this is one of my things I love. I do believe structure gives you freedom. That was an early mentor of mine, um, Ali Brown said, structure gives you freedom. And I think she learned that from someone called Dan Glazer. And the idea being, the more you put structure around things, the more you can be yourself. And this is, for example, in a presentation or in a meeting, or you know, when you're actually uh, standing on stage, if you've got structure around you about how long and how much and what to say and when you planned it, it allows you to be very much in the moment with people. It allows you to know where you're going. So Miles Davis said that time isn't the main thing, it's the only thing. And it is a resource we don't know how much we have. We only, we have the same 24 hours as everybody else in the day and it's what and how we use it. And so being very fierce when you need to be about your time gives you the freedom to be kind of, you know, in the moment and know that you can go for a walk or hang out or whatever it is because you've structured things. So I truly walk my own talk about systemizing things. I have a system for how you put emails together, how you make presentations, how you put PowerPoint presentations together, how you write down to how you leave an email or how you run a big meeting to get the most out of it and to be able to be as authentic and present as you can be in the moment. So <clears throat> I said, shared with you what I mean about structure gives you freedom and that ticking clock. I do believe if you know where your gaps are, you can actually book them as well. I have booked in time in my diary to prepare webinars. It literally says prepare webinars because my diary goes out and about like I'm sure yours does in your organization. And unless it's blocked in certain places, some, someone else goes into it or they look and say, oh, you can have a chat at three o'clock or whatever. And so I will put preparation, or I recommend to clients as well, not just admin, because that's kind of like one of those woolly things, but to put uh, preparation for, you know, uh, report and accounts or um, <clears throat> board meeting uh, preparation. Putting it in your diary like that and blocking some time off. What happens is when you look at your diary, you're like, oh, okay, yes, I have agreed to do that. I'm not putting that off. And if you, like a lot of my clients can be, are a deadline junkie that you only really kind of galvanize yourself when the deadline's close, this puts a false deadline in your diary, which is actually really effective because having a false deadline still helps you jibber yourself along. <clears throat> I'm going to have to have a sip of water because I don't want to splutter. So mind the gap <clears throat> is an intention. It's giving you gaps that you can head for where you can think, you know what, I need my lunch there. I need to put that report together. I'm not gonna leave it until five o'clock tonight. Where's the gap that's gonna give me an hour? And I had four different hour, maybe in fact five different hour sections over the last couple of weeks to be able to put the webinars together because I know I wanted to put thought into them and energy and make it simple. Now, if, it's, if I hadn't done that, this wouldn't be structured in a way that is useful for you. It's the same for you. And I know you know this logically, but energetically, I wonder how often you do it for yourself because it is really a service to yourself and to all those who rely on you. Now, you have competing schedules at home. You have competing schedules in your work life and your, your personal life, of course. Excuse me. And it gives you a much clearer sense of your priorities. And the thing about I said about commitment is giving yourself, if you will, permission to commit to what it is that's important for you as well. Because otherwise, and I know, know this from a lot of women, otherwise you are literally bouncing from one thing to another. And at the end of the day, feeling, well, what did I actually achieve today? And also, how do I feel? If you're absolutely exhausted, you're not going to relax yourself so well, you're going to sleep more restlessly. And this is, again, all part of our well-being and our feeling about how we show up each day, how positive we feel each day. So it truly does benefit everyone. So Elizabeth is one of my clients, and this is Elizabeth's story. When, she, when this all first kicked off, Elizabeth and her two boys were in um, lockdown, literally isolating 
for 14 days before everyone else was. And she was definitely struggling with how she was going to manage all of this. And I saw this little um, sheet go by, a photo, this is a photograph of something I saw on Facebook. And I just said to her, I think this will help. Being a structured person and someone who is a project manager working on the big banks, I said to her, I think this will help as far as getting the schedule together for everyone with your husband at home and her as well and her two boys. So this is truly what she did. She took a structure like this and everybody had their own. And then everyone was able to compare notes. Another of clients of mine also said how it was most important to come round together in the morning and have a family huddle. Francis said, we get together in the morning and we all sort of, we have either breakfast or just after breakfast, we all look at our schedules and say, okay, what time do you need to be, need to be quiet? What time are you on a webinar? What time are you? And there is an element of real, again, structure to their day that means someone isn't shouting <clears throat> on a webinar or playing in the garden when someone else is trying to have an appraisal with someone. So this is really, again, making a deal with yourself, but also with your family. And if this is you working at home on your own, <coughs> excuse me, if this is you working at home on your own, it's still just as important to look and think. So for example, you know, what's going on around me in the daytime? What time do, um, you know, the dustmen come? Or what is going on around that means I'm gonna be distracted and I'm, again, very fierce about where or when I'll do something based on how um, my environment is. And so your huddle with your team, getting together on a quick, and calling it a huddle actually, is, is a really energetically strong thing to do. Getting together and saying, okay, what's happening today? What time is everybody, what time is it good to compare notes at the end of the day? Or what can I do for you today? How can we make today as effective as possible? You know, being as I say, open, but also really open about the structure because you don't want to be working into the night if you don't have to, and nor does everyone else. And another client of mine works with people in Bermuda and Australia and Singapore and America. And of course that means you can be open and on the phone 24 hours. So she said, I have had to be really fierce about my time zone and when I'm available and when you get the best out of me, because America will get the end of her day while she's first thing in the morning, still probably in her pajamas in Singapore. And she said, if I don't actually say, I can't do it between X and Y, I have to do it because everyone is assuming that she's available because she's at home. And as she said, I'm not, I'm feeling so ragged. So this is where the structure and the commitment to yourself is so crucial. And there are many ways of doing this. I love some of these images. An Excel spreadsheet, this is a particularly boring one that I found, but I just wanted to give the example of putting together a spreadsheet. Another client of mine, um, Jo, she said to me, we've had to have a big family wall chart. I ordered a wall chart from uh, Amazon and we're filling it out so that we understand each week what we're all doing. And then it's one of those sort of erasable ones because she said, I have missed homeschooling. I've missed them go logging on when they need to and without the structure that I can glance at and think, no, I've, I've got to jump off this call because I've got to do something and then I'll come back again. She said, I was feeling absolutely out of control. So post-it notes, that's another example of being structured and particularly with children, that you can take the post-it note off and screw it up and it's gone and so you can start to sort of reduce some of the commitments and make it sort of visceral and interesting in your home office. This isn't obviously something for every day at work, the structure is useful for everyday at work, but this is particularly useful for now at home. So wall calendars, post-it notes, printing out a copy of your diary, which is what I've done. And then I print out a day at a time and then I start writing on the day itself rather than having to type it all. But then I can glance down and see it. <clears throat> and if I know that I absolutely have changed my mind and something needs to be blocked, I go straight into my diary and block it. And we'll say, you know, what it's for, exercise or, um, errands or whatever it is so that you know I have a life and so do you and this is why I really want to encourage you knowing that your company is trying to support you to make you to encourage you to support yourself you know how do you how are you best supported <clears throat> and here's the other thing beware of energy vampires I can't tell you the amount of clients who said to me Kay I 
the time it's taking to do things, it's effective, we're using Zoom, we're having weekly uh, huddles, we're having town halls, all the things, board meetings. But instead of, so one client, client, for example, instead of having one day for a board meeting, they've had to make it two because they know everything is taking that bit longer. It's still going ahead, it's still effective, but it's all taking that bit longer. So being aware of energy vampires, those who need more of you, is also being able to have some space. So not put the phone down at two minutes to three and then hop on at three o'clock, or literally I've got to go. And so using, again, devices around you, I think is really helpful. I will say to someone, okay, I've got 40 minutes. Absolutely, I'm all yours. I am gonna put a little timer on so that I can be completely present with you. And then when we hear it go, we'll sort of bring us into land so that I can hop in for the next call and so that you know I can let you go as well into your day. <clears throat> this is really useful because you're telling the person I'm all ears and there's some structure around it. <coughs> Excuse me. So that you build in some space, so that you can move, you get up, walk outside. So really encouraging you to give yourself permission because that's often all it takes give yourself permission to need to move to have a little space to be able to have lunch and not have it at your desk on a zoom meeting so <clears throat> again asking you yourself what about when you rest and relax how are you building in time for yourself where are you building in time for yourself most of my clients have said i take about 40 minutes to an hour to commute every day i have absolutely committed I would say five different clients are exercising during their commuting time. So going out for a walk, going onto the treadmill, going um, on their bikes, whatever it is, when they would have been commuting, they're not jumping straight into work, but using the commuting time of which, say for example, you've got two 40 minute journeys. So you've got nearly an hour and a half that you've got back. Now you could say, yes, but I spend most of my commute reading emails. Well, in this time when you can then, you're more intensively working at your desk, using your commute time to exercise or to sort out other things in the family, to catch up on some admin yourself, that's critical and that's truly your decision to do. And, you know, this is the thing so much, most, I find particularly, most women are so kind to others and not so kind to themselves. And this is true of men, of course. It's very much, what can I do for you? How can I make something easy for you? And not being so giving of themselves and saying what they need and how they need to have a moment. And that image there is really, you know, a big, a big space with a chair to be able to read or to do whatever it is you need to do, because this is where booking that in. And as we know, things that get written down are much easier to commit to because there they are in writing, you've said it. And so it's setting an intention, if nothing else, to have that time. And knowing that if you say yes to something else, you're saying no. So every yes you say reduces the time to yourself, reduces the exercise, reduces the time you can prepare on your board report or your team update or reporting back to the PRA or whatever your version of that is. Everything else you say yes to, reduces the attention span of the other thing that you've committed to and that's not very comfortable and that is what I believe helps you commit to doing the thing you've said you wanted to do. There's um, a metaphor that Stephen Covey who wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People he said was when you look at your you put your priorities are the big rocks and then the pebbles are the <clears throat> excuse me the pebbles are the other things that you know are going on and then the sand is kind of like everything else that fills out the day. And then the water that comes in last just sort of fills the space. But making your priorities, your exercise, one of the big rocks, making the time with your family or cooking a, a good meal or going for a bike ride, <clears throat> making those one of your rocks versus the water or the sand, you know, the sort of thing that might fit in, that is absolutely doing yourself a service for your own health and well-being. And you're setting a great example. So as I say, this is absolutely me encouraging you, clearly not telling you, but encouraging you to think about yourself in this precious commodity way, because you only have so much energy that you can invest in that 24 hours that everybody else has. And truly, the decisions that you're making around it 
will really support you. And it'd be interesting to notice more closely what decisions you're making as you're making them. Now, sleep is a big one. And when I say, you know, this uh, structure gives you freedom, being able to decide, you know what, I need to give myself a good lead into going to bed. I need to do certain things. I like to have a bath. I like to, I personally like to have a bath and I like to do my Pilates. And it's kind of a routine that gets me towards my bedroom and my bed. And so many uh, women have said to me, okay, you know, getting everyone to go to sleep and then start working with America. You know, the, the only place I find the time is, you know, out of my evening. Well, again, knowing that it takes you a while to come down from your day is truly about making again that commitment to what time it is you want to be in bed and then working back from there and if it's half an hour to get you to bed then again looking at that as an immovable it's so important because again this is where your energy and your vitality comes from day to day of course and it's so easy to underestimate the power of sleep now, I have something to share with you that, again, you may say, oh, this couldn't possibly work for me. I'm not interested, but I'm sharing it with you. I've written a, an ebook about jet traveling. I've traveled a lot for business and also still in my business. And I learned how to sleep virtually on a washing, row, washing line and how to sleep on a plane. And so I have a little mantra that absolutely works for me. And I have shared it a number of times and it's in my ebook, a mantra that literally helps me sleep and if I wake up in the night and I can't sleep or I can't go back to sleep my mind's going or something's going on I use this mantra to help me rest and stay in bed because one of the things I will always say is you get out of bed and start watching something or doing your emails or ironing as someone told me that they did <laughs> then you are going to really have to uh, wind down again to go back to sleep if that's ultimately what you want. So I would say stay in bed. And this is what I say and this is what I do. I lie there and I say resting with the, the active verb so that it's actually happening, not rest, but resting, relaxing, sleeping, dreaming. Resting, relaxing, sleeping, dreaming. And it's my version of counting sheep, except I'm giving myself these really positive suggestions of what I want my brain to do. Resting, and as soon as I say it, I can feel myself appreciating my surroundings, knowing that I'm lying down, knowing that it's dark, that my brain is having a rest. Relaxing, as soon as I say that, I can feel the sheets, I can feel the coziness, I can feel where I am. Sleeping is obviously the intention and I can feel myself remembering and feeling drowsy and dreaming. Well, that's obviously, I don't often get to that. Now I might say that constantly for about half an hour and then I don't remember anything else. I want to give you this truly as something that will again give you some, a place to find yourself and to try it. Resting, relaxing, sleeping, dreaming. So as I move through here, I hope this webinar structure gives you freedom, has given you some ideas. If you would like to stay connected with me, but also if you would like to receive a complimentary chapter from my book, It's Always Your Move, I put in there the eight principles of your success cycle. It goes like that because it never ends how you show up at work, how you negotiate, how you build connections. And the, num the figure eight is part of the book. Principle five, shine in interviews and appraisals, is not about necessarily interviews externally. It's about interviews internally. One of my clients recently has moved from a team where she was managing six people to a team now where she's managing 100 people. She went through all sorts of interviews and obviously one-to-ones and presentations, which we helped prepare her for, a group that I host, a mentoring group. And she got the job because she was so prepared, because she had some structure into how she was preparing. And in the chapter that you can take for yourself at kwhite.com forward slash always hyphen your hyphen move, you will find the chapter on interviews and appraisals preparing yourself for your one-to-ones, but also preparing yourself for other people's one-to-ones. So I've put in there a lot of 
tips, strategies, ideas, stories to share with you that will support you at this time. Because let's be honest, interviews are not stopping. I have two clients who are currently looking at new roles and having interviews over Zoom and Skype. And often, as you know, even in um, the days when we're in the office and close to everyone, a lot of interviews are held virtually. So it helps you prepare for all of that. And one-to-ones, if you don't prepare for your one-to-ones, well, you're really missing an opportunity and you know that. So let this help you. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me at support at kwhite.com. That's support at kwhite.com. I would always be delighted to hear from you having watched this webinar, what what else could I do? How do you mean? What do you mean by that? Why did you say this? Please just drop me a note and I will re respond to you um, because we're all in this together. We're all working out our way through this and forward together. And I do believe structure gives you freedom. I hope that this has supported you. And I have got a little tiny timer here to make sure I'm on time for you just over half an hour. Um, to give you these ideas and I want to encourage you to really use the structure that you have that's possible in your day because one of the things that I have found as a bonus <laughs> is that we have three rescue lurchers they come from three different rescue homes and one was tied up outside one one was found wandering the streets and um, Miss Dee Dee was found um, again tied up and they the time at home has been a bonus being able to be with our hounds much more but at the same time, they're a bit kind of clingy because we're always here. So one of the things, again, is to look for the silver linings and hanging out with your children more, being able to be more closely connected with your team because you're speaking to them more often. You're seeing you know, some background. I obviously have a, a virtual background here just for a bit of fun, but I just have a very simple office space. But giving yourself more, giving yourself permission to be imperfect, to not necessarily have to know everything. And this is that time again, I've, I've had a number of clients say how much more connected they feel to their team because they've had much more to do with them, if you will, and talking about things and managing things that are going on day to day. So I would say that has been one of my bonuses. And if you'd like to drop me a note about what you've found to be a bonus as well, since you've been working from home, and also what you've struggled with. And if I can help you in any way, I'm very open to how that could work. So Seth Godin, who is one of my marketing heroes, who's such a brilliant writer, he says, you don't need more time in your day. You need to decide. Quite a confronting thing to say. And I understand that you can't have full control over every moment because other people have their input. But you don't, everyone has the same 24 hours. You don't need more time in your day. You need to decide is really a throwdown. And it's one that I have taken on for myself. So until the next time and until soon, stay safe. And as I say, stay out of the way. Bye for now.